ultra short throw projectors, they're gaining in popularity versus short throw projectors because they don't need as much room space to set one up. For example, this Polaris 4K that I've been set to review from a company called Bowmaker, you only need about 10 inches away from a wall to then project a 100 inch image. So it has a maximum output of 4K 60, it supports HDR, the maximum brightness of this model that I'm reviewing here today is 2500 ANSI lumens. It does have its own built-in file manager with it. We've got two inputs on the back, so 4K 60 times two with HDMI. It's fan cooled, of course, that these projectors always are, but this model here has two built-in speakers that are 10 watts. They support DTS and Dolby Audio, and they are probably some of the best built-in speakers I have heard, considering, well, they're only 10 watts, but they certainly pack a lot of punch for that. So in this review, I'll cover the build design of this, image quality, and exactly what you can expect, including fan noise sample, and what kind of heat this is going to generate after displaying 4K HDR images for quite a few hours. Then inside the box, you will find a user manual, so that is in various different languages. We have a warranty card, HDMI cable, power cable, depending on your region, and then an audio video cable adapter here too. The remote that we get included with this is not an Android TV remote, but it's similar. It's got its own file manager in it that I'll go through and video player. So basic controls here, power buttons up the top. And then if you remove the back cover here, it does take two AAA batteries, which aren't included. Along the top here, it is all plastic. This is where the laser is. Of course, being an ultra short throw projector, this is the way they are set up because it's actually going to be beaming up here and not like the typical short throw projector. That's the difference with these and the style of them. So right here is just a laser class two warning sticker. You can of course pull that off. It does look a bit ugly, but it's there just to warn us. I think they have to do that as a precautionary measure. Marked along the front here, you can see some of the tech that it does support. So it's a DLP projector, this one, HDR support, MEMC, and Dolby Audio. What is missing off there is DTS Audio. The throw ratio with this ultra short throw projector is 0.25 to 1, the ratio, and it does project up to 2,500 ANSI lumens. The resolution is 3840 by 2160. That's our native 4K resolution. And the lamp hours that it can do, lamp life, is about 30,000 hours, which is typical for these projectors. Along the back of it, there are another two warning stickers here, and it's pretty straightforward. Don't, don't put anything on top of it. Don't let it overheat. So there is a Kensington lock slot right here on the right-hand side. Power in, and I'll go over the inputs now. It has two HDMI 2s here, so they are HDMI 2.0. 4K 60, of course, supporting the maximum refresh rate of this particular projector. There is a service micro USB port here and then another little plug. So these aren't valid to us. That's just for the service centers for them to do firmware updates or whatever they do with it. And then there's digital audio out right here. Our audio video input in with that adapter that I showed you before and a USB port here. This is USB 3 and it's DC 5 volts, 1 amp. Right side of the projector here, we do have a big intake vent, more intake vents there at the bottom, and there is this right here, which is another USB port. Now this one's USB 2 spec, and it only outputs 0.5 amps, 5 volts. Then the opposite side here is where you'll find the two fans inside that's keeping this all cool. So those are located right here. Now of course, with such a powerful projector, with that brightness it's got of 2,500 ANSI lumens, it will generate a bit of heat. So later on I will give you a sample of what these fans sound like after using the projector for a few hours. Then the underside we have four adjustable feet to get it nice and level, and there are some holes here, four of them, for a mount to use this on. And then up the front we've got those two 10 watt speakers. They sound really good, and there's also a status LED here. Now it looks like it's a power button, but the power button's the capacitive one that's on the top. And this is our menu right here. Now I do straight away have to apologize for my wall. It's not 100% flat. And what I would normally use is a projector screen, but the screen looked even worse. And that's because this is an ultra short throw projector. So the angle it comes up, you really do notice about two or three times more so than a normal projector 
with these ultra short ones is any imperfections in your wall or your screen. So ideally you want to have a 100% flat wall to protect this on and even use a screen that's flat for that. So this menu here, you can see we've got a bit of information on the projector, file browser is Firefox, file manager, we have our sources, screen mirroring and download. So it's not running Android TV, which is a shame, but it does run Android. So if you go here into our general settings, by just pressing the settings button, you can go down and have a look at general and you'll see here version info and updates. So they do have over the air updates. I am on the latest version at the time of this video here. So a lot of the things we can tweak in here, sleep, menu timeout, power on sound, and our languages and time zones and everything else. Bluetooth, so we do have Bluetooth support with this. Network connections that you have to go through when you first set it up. Well, you don't actually need to set this up. You can just go straight into it if you want. Audio settings, uh, light source, so you can see and go through and adjust this. So auto brightness, eye care mode, and other options there, projection, and you can even put up the test pattern, which is very handy to have there, of course, with this. Image, so these are where the main settings you'll be after. So that's where you can tweak everything here. You go down a little further on, you've got our aspect ratio, you can adjust that. DLC, noise reduction levels, MPG, pure motion, and HDR right there at the bottom. So there's a lot of different adjustments in here, and it does have focus, which is auto focus on this particular projector, so you don't need to worry too, about, too much about that. And keystone correction is vertical, 40 degrees plus and minus. Now we do have a built-in file manager. If you just simply go to the sources, you can bring that up, media browser, and we'll see how it handles this drive. Now we do have onboard storage. It's 32 gigabytes and it's got three gigabytes of RAM. It's a quad-core chip, maximum turbo is 1.7 gigahertz. So you could use that storage too as well for downloading things. Let's go into my pen drive and I'll play back a few files. So this menu is quite quick. I'm getting around in it very easily. It doesn't show any lag. So I have a 2K demo there, but I won't play that. Let's go straight into something super demanding. So my jellyfish file here, which is 4K, 140 megabits per second. HEVC, is it going to play it? Hopefully it can. This quad-core chip that it's got. And the three gigabytes of RAM. Okay, audio codecs not supported in this one, but look at that. It is playing it back flawlessly. Really good. In fact, that's doing better than Intel's Jasper Lake, I think. That's just handling that with ease. Not a problem there. So it can handle HEVC and pretty much every single codec out there I've seen. So let's try another one. Let's take a look at the 2K Gravity Trailer. This should not be a problem for it. And it looks like we are going to have audio with this one too. So just skip ahead. All right, that looks good. And another demanding file, so 4K HDR, but this is 4K 63 frames per second HEVC. Sony Swordsmith. Skip ahead a bit. Okay, now that looks really good. For an HDR file here with that projection, I'm not seeing noise in the blacks at all, which is excellent. Some of the projectors I have reviewed, you see a lot of this noise in the blacks, but even on the medium setting, that's looking excellent. HDR content now. So what I'll do is just take a look at what we can go through with the settings. Now you see that automatically when it's playing HDR, it will detect that and come through. So we've got these settings right here. So HDR user I found is best so far. Now the default is HDR natural, which I found was uh, at times just a little bit too bright. HDR cinema and then HDR bright, their own bright one. HDR game too for when you're gaming, it should lower down that input lag using the game modes with it. So, so far I do think once you tweak it and get your own preference there, with the HDR quality and general image quality, it does come out very good, really bright. Now I'll just turn the lights on again to see with HDR content, we can still make it out okay. Will it be watchable with some ambient light on? Well, that's quite a bit of light that I put on now. And yes, it's still watchable, but of course you don't get the full benefit of it. It's really best to be viewing this content with the lights out completely. But 
it is possible with the lights on. And now a preview here of the Netflix's The Witcher TV series. I can't show you much of this at all, of course, because I'll get slammed with copyright. So this is looking very good. I could happily watch this TV series through a projector like this. Now it hasn't clipped over into 4K. I can tell that at the moment because it's not quite as sharp. But once you're playing those proper 4K clips, it increases that resolution. You can really tell the difference in how stunning and sharp the image looks. Now gaming at 100 inches here, 4K in HDR. This is set to the 4K, not the performance mode, but quality with Dirt 5. And input lag here, so the input latency, I'm not noticing any noticeable problems or issues. I can quite happily game like this. And it is stunning to game here at 100 inches, 4K detailed, looks good. You can see all those details just fine. And I've got to mention again, I'm really happy with those blacks. The fact that it's very low noise. I'm not seeing all that terrible grain like I've seen with other projectors, a lot of noise. And so far, the fan has been excellent. You can, well, when you get up close to it, you can hear it, but really like now gaming, I don't hear that fan at all, especially with those built-in speakers. Now this projector's got some really good speakers. They're only 10 watts, but they certainly sound so much louder than that. So two of them at the front, and they are DTS and also Dolby audio speakers. Here's a sample of them at just 50% volume because at 100, it's actually a little bit too loud for my microphone, but they sound excellent. The best I've heard in a projector. One very good thing about this projector too is the fan noise is excellent for these laser projectors. They are normally quite loud and put out quite a bit of heat, but it does have the two fans in here and they're constantly, most of the time, at a very low RPM and you barely ever hear them. So holding my hand up here, it's hardly warm. Now I've been using this projector now for four hours at least and that's gaming. So it's been putting out HDR images at a maximum brightness really and it's still very quiet. So here's a sample of it now, what you can expect. Now the Polaris 4K here does have an eye protection mode and I'm not talking about blue light filters. No, an actual protection mode that turns off the lasers in there. So if you've got young children that could get up too close to it, it turns it right off. Here's a sample of what it actually does. To protect your eyes, please keep an appropriate viewing distance. Now after a week of testing this out and watching a lot of The Expanse with Amazon Prime video through this, I must say that I am really impressed with the blacks on this particular model here especially. A lot of laser projectors or the DLP setups that I've been reviewing in the channel, well a few of them, have had a lot of grain and noise to their blacks, but you don't see any of that on the medium setting. Now the image quality, very sharp 4K, 60 hertz max. For gaming, I think it's perfectly fine. I didn't have any issues gaming on this at all, playing games like Dirt 5 that I showed you that quick demo of. I think the input lag is definitely acceptable for that, and it looks really stunning and great to be gaming at 100 inches. Now with the HDR support, I did find, this is one of my very few complaints with this particular projector, is that they overdo it a little bit with the default setting that comes through automatically. So the PlayStation detected it, set it up as an HDR uh, screen and it automatically swaps over to the HDR mode, right? But what I found that with the HDR high setting, which is by default, it really seemed a little bit washed out to me, just, just pushing the brightness way too much. When you tone it down and set it to, say, the normal level or low, or go in there and configure the picture image quality yourself instead of using their own preferences there for your picture quality, you can get a really good image out of this. And I've been enjoying all the content I've been viewing on this, so a lot of Amazon Prime video, Netflix and gaming has all been fantastic on this. The one thing that has really surprised me, well, two things actually, is the fan noise on this, very good. Only occasionally, for a split few seconds, I've heard it go into a slightly higher fan RPM, but then it just drops down two or three seconds later. It is the sample I gave you, a very quiet projector. Now, I have reviewed quite a few models now. One of the recent ones, a 4K projector that's focused on gaming from BenQ. That model puts out quite a bit of heat, a lot of heat, in fact. It would warm this room up where I am, and I do my reviews in my studio. This doesn't. 
and it makes barely any fan noise compared to that and compared to other models, I'd have to say that this is one of the quieter 4K ultra short throw projectors or even just 4K projectors that I've reviewed in the channel. So great when it comes to both the thermals, they're managing that heat on this so well, probably because of its super large size, that's definitely helping. And the other surprise is the speakers in this. You would think that, okay, well, DTS and the Dolby that you've got with them, that they'll be okay. And they're only 10 watts, they're built into it, so at the front here. But it really does pump out that volume because they've got quite a bit of space in this, they can actually add an additional little bit of bass to it as well. So they're quite well tuned. I think they sound excellent for what they are and probably one of the best I've heard in a projector. So really, there are very few cons with a machine like this, with this particular ultra short throw projector. Really do love it. It's just that for me, the HDR was a bit of an overkill there. And a minor complaint that I know is not even gonna be a problem for some people is it doesn't have Android TV built in. I think that would have been nice it just would have been an, an additional easier kind of setup for it. It means you don't need to get another box for your Amazon Prime TV, your Netflix, and all that sort of stuff, YouTube, and all those apps. You'd have it already built into it, so it's lacking that. It does have a basic file manager. You can swap sources, you can go on the internet, you can download things, but that is really it, what I showed you. But it was good to see that from the USB ports, it's still enough that it can be very smooth and rapid and play back some very demanding files. So ATVC, 140 megabit per second, 4K and 4K60 and HDR files, really with no problems playing those through the inbuilt browser. So that's not really a massive con. It just would have been a nice added little touch if it did actually support Android TV. So thank you so much for watching my review here of Bowmaker's Polaris 4K laser projector.